Hey Potters, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to transfer designs, patterns, photographs, pictures onto a pot before it's been fired. So you could take just a normal piece of paper and draw one of your patterns from your pattern glossary if you're looking for ideas. Um, you could also print out a pattern on a normal size sheet of paper. You could print out a photograph. Um, I put this through an app on my phone that will change it into strictly black and white, um, which helps with the transferring process. You could also just draw a picture on a piece of paper that you would want to transfer onto your pot. So lots of options and lots of choices. I like to get one of these small boards. I'm working at a pottery wheel. Um, now this is not attached, so you need to be careful when you're spinning it. Um, but this is the fastest way to coat an entire pot with underglaze. So I have a paper plate here, my underglaze. I got a big brush since this pot is pretty large. I like to just hold my hand a little bit on top of the piece as I slowly spin it adding on the underglaze. You do want to make sure that you have three coats of underglaze. I like the, my pots to be at the end of leather hard when I do this step so that the underglaze will soak in to the clay body. If you try to do this when the clay is too wet, the underglaze isn't gonna dry fast enough to get your three coats on. All right, I put a total of three coats on this, and this is why I like to use the little board, is because now it's too wet to pick up, but since it's on the board, I can pick it up and go put it in front of the fan so the surface of this pot will dry. This is our drying area, so there is the pot there. With these fans, I like to have them on one, so the setting one, and then push this button so they uh, will turn. All right, so the underglaze has dried onto the pot. And now I'm going to take whatever it is you're transferring and um, you might wanna cut it to fit. And then a needle tool, I'm just gonna start going over all these lines. All right, so now I am done tracing and you take the paper off. All of the imprints are there. I'm gonna carve out the places I want carved. And it's kind of nice because the underglaze puts just enough moisture back into the clay to make this easy to carve. So again, I really like to have the dry paintbrush um, next to me so I can dust these off as I go. If I were to just do it with my hand, it would make a whole bunch of little white spots from the clay rubbing on the underglaze. All right, for this next technique, um, I'm gonna be using this image. When you go, obviously, the best choice would be to draw your own um, images or take a photograph and trace your photograph. Um, but if you need to, you could go on to Google and do an image search. When you're on Google, it will give you like a click box for tools, and then you go to usage rights and then go to Creative Commons. That way you're not stealing other artists' um, designs. Those designs are out there for anyone to use for their creative purposes. So that is how I got this design. Um, this pot is leather hard. I have not underglazed it or anything, so it's just bare clay. When you're tracing with your needle tool, you wanna hold it at an angle 
instead of like straight up and down. If you did it straight up and down, it tends to rip the paper a little bit. So I just hold it like I do a pencil. All right, so I've gone over everything. Pull that away. I need some of the paper sticking and my images are now transferred. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple different examples on the same pot. <clears throat> um, I have the underglaze that I want. I'm gonna mix up a few different shades of green here. And then I'm just gonna start brushing in the colors I want. And I actually like kind of a looser painting style, so I'm not like stressing if it gets a little bit out of the lines. I do want to create some different values on these leaves. So I'm just dipping my brush in the different values as I go along. <clears throat> as I'm doing this, I am really trying to load up my brush with underglaze and kind of just lay it on there. You know, you're still going to need to have three to four coats of underglaze. So the heavier I can get it on there, the better. I'm not brushing it out a lot. Again, I'm just kind of like setting the underglaze on there. It's important to get a size brush that you need uh, for your design. So I don't want to get a really big brush here because that would make it really hard. And then I also have a really small brush to get in to these smaller areas. I'm going to go on with a smaller brush and just put some highlights, crisp up my lines a little bit. And then I'll go back over this. I'll go back over this two more times so I have three coats of underglaze on here. All right, so I'm going to let this dry um, and then I will show you the next step. Okay, so now I have it all underglaze and it's dry. I'm going to take this wax resist. Wax resist um, will protect anything that is underneath it. So I take my brush. You only need one coat of wax resist. So again, I'm just going to lay this over. And again, I like the kind of loose painterly look. So I don't get really uptight. That's just my personal style. Okay, so the wax resist is on there. I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to show you another technique where I'm not going to put any underglaze on. I am only going to wax resist it. And what happens here is that when I put the underglaze on the background, this clay will be protected here. So when it's all said and done, the part underneath this wax resist will be the color of the clay, which is a beautiful, creamy, white color. We currently in the studio use um, Laguna B Mix. It's a really nice smooth clay body. Alright, so this one I'm just gonna have a little fun. I'm gonna mix up some different colors here. 
and play around with painting. Okay, so use the transfer technique, then I underglaze, and now I'm gonna go in and kind of redefine these lines using scraffito. Scraffito is when you're scratching away at the surface to the color underneath. I'm gonna do some accent lines in there too. And again, make sure that you have a dry paintbrush. So look at how that added some clarity, some definition. Again, this would be scraffito. This is only one way of doing scraffito. I'm not gonna do it all over, but I am gonna do it in just some spots to create some more definition. So this is a minimal um, scraffitoing. You could get in and do more scraffitoing, like cross hatching. Um, you can get really detailed. We do have a TikTok where I show doing a person using Scrapito. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to the wax resist. And I wanna wax resist over this because I'm gonna end up painting the background a different color. Now, honestly, I think this would be really beautiful just with the, the plain um, clay color but I wanna show you how whatever you wanna protect, you can cover up with wax resist. All right, so I'm back at the wheel. Um, I flipped this upside down, mostly so when I turn the wheel, I can just hold on to it up here. I'm not holding it really tight. Um, and I'm gonna juice up my underglaze. Look at how that wax resist just resists the underglaze. but you could use any color, okay? Um, and you don't have to paint the whole background. You could do another pattern in the background. But I'm gonna work on getting my three coats here and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So after you're putting on three coats, the under or the wax resist kinda gets mad at you. So I like to just wipe a little bit off um, and then I'm gonna put this in front of the fan and let it dry and then I can get the rest of this underglaze off. If you want a nice crisp image, you're gonna want to remove that underglaze. And if you have really small areas like this, um, we have Q-tips that you can use to get the underglaze off. All right, so I have some Q-tips here. I will say this is mostly dry, but it doesn't dry as well where the wax is so it's nice if you can catch it while the underglaze is still a little wet on the wax if not it's not a big deal you just have to rub it a little bit more i'm trying to get the bulk of the color off with my sponge and then i will go in with a wet Q-tip. You know, a wet paintbrush would also probably work for this. And just get rid of some of those areas. So take your time. It will. The results will definitely be worth it. I'm using the wet side of this Q-tip to wipe the underglaze, and then I go in with the dry side and kind of dry it off. You know, just play around, experiment. It's all about experimenting, seeing what works best for you. Um, it's all about experimenting and coming up with new techniques and um, I always like to give you the basic ideas so that you can take those basic ideas and see what you can come up with. 
I can't wait to see what you guys all do.